This is the Grumman F-14 Tomcat, the most revolutionary fighter jet of its time. The existence of this fighter jet has been able to prevent the Third World War and nuclear war in the past. Despite its sophistication, unfortunately, the age of this fighter jet does not last long. It was forced to be grounded in its golden peak. What were the reasons? Here, you will find out why. During the Cold War, the Soviets and the US competed with each other to dominate the world in various fields including defense equipment. Military research and development from the two countries did not stop innovating military aircraft to beat their opponents. In the 1960s, the Soviets had succeeded in creating jet bombers namely Tupol of 16, Tupol of 22, and Tupol of 22M which were capable of hitting aircraft carriers from very long distances without being detected by radar at that time. This was very frightening for the US Navy because the safety of their aircraft carriers can be threatened unpredictably. Not to mention that the Tupolev of plane had supersonic speed, making the F-4 Phantom II jet fighter owned by the US Navy helpless to fight. This was a big problem for the US Navy in the 1960s and the problem didn't just stop there. With the Cold War heating up, followed by a proxy war in Vietnam in the late 1960s, the once proud US Navy F-4 Phantom II was increasingly powerless against the maneuverability of the Soviet-made MiG-21. For a simple comparison, the F-4 Phantom II weighs 19 tons while the MiG-21 weighs less than 10 tons. It was certain that the F-4 Phantom II loses a lot in terms of maneuverability. Aware of the lack of combat power of the F-4 Phantom II, three-star rank Admiral U.S. Navy, Thomas F. Connolly, got angry in front of the United States Senate Committee on Armed Services in 1968. He even said, there isn't enough power in all Christendom to make that airplane what we want. It was thanks to him that the F-14 that the U.S. Navy had dreamed of could be built and he was also the project manager. Following the testimony of Thomas F. Connolly, in July 1968, the Naval Air Systems Command issued a request for proposals for the Naval Fighter Experimental Program to replace F-4 Phantom II. This proposal was eventually won by Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation because of its reputation for building Navy specialty fighter aircraft. The specifications requested by the U.S. Navy were quite challenging, must be able to fly supersonic Mach 2.2, be reliable in maneuvers, and be capable of carrying out all types of attack missions, be it air-to-air -air or air-to-ground missions. A request that was difficult to fulfill because of the limitations of the engineering design which trade off with each other to get optimal features. With the help of General Dynamics and its experience with F-111B, Grumman came up with a creative solution by providing a jet fighter design known as a variable sweep wing. It was really killing two birds with one stone solution. Why? Firstly, during takeoff and air-to-ground missions, the wings of the jet fighter can be made wider sweep so that they are stable at lower speeds, able to lift heavy weight bombs, and can take off on short trajectories, a mandatory requirement for fighter jets to take off from Navy aircraft carriers. Secondly, when chasing supersonic enemy fighters during air-to-air -air missions, the wing of the fighter jet can be made a narrow sweep so that it can optimally reduce drag which increases top speed and saves more fuel. Because of tight development time due to the upcoming presidential election, the Navy skipped through a prototyping process and jumped directly to full-scale development. With more advanced radar capabilities, more complete armament, and extraordinary maneuverability, the F-14 was soon in action to replace the F-4 Phantom II. The first F-14 flight occurred in the U.S. on December 21, 1970, which just only 22 months after Grumman was awarded the contract. Less than four years later, the U.S. Navy immediately used the F-14 in September 1974 to replace F-4 Phantom II. There was only one other country that used the F-14 besides the U.S., namely Iran because of the political closeness between the U.S. and the last Shah of Iran. For more than three decades, the F-14 used by the U.S. and Iran has been able to terrify adversaries using other fighter jets in the Persian Gulf and establish air superiority. Some of the notable operations include 1. Gulf of Sidra Incident In the first engagement in 1981, two U.S. Navy F-14 Tomcats were engaged by two Libyan Sukhoi-22. The F-14 easily evaded Libyan missiles and returned fire, downing both Libyan aircraft with AIM-9 L Sidewinders. F-14 was the clear winner due to superior air-to-air -air combat. This incident happened again in 1989 when two U.S. Navy F-14 Tomcats were threatened by two Libyan MiG-23. F-14 Tomcats also emerged as the winner. 
2. Operation Desert Storm also known as Gulf War During this operation in 1991, U.S. Navy used F-14 Tomcat primarily for air defense and reconnaissance missions. AIM-54 Phoenix missiles, which operational distance is the furthest even when compared to the standard missiles of the modern era, were always on standby, and makes all opponents fearful. It was only natural that the F-14 can establish air superiority because every time the opponent feels targeted by the advanced AWG-9 radar from the F-14, their fighter jets always run away to save themselves. 3. Iran-Iraq War in 1980-1988 F-14 Greatest Weapon, AIM-54 Phoenix, was the most widely used by Iran in the eight years of the Iraqi-Iranian War with a total of 62 air-to-air -air strikes. During the war, Iran managed to down 160 Iraqi aircraft ranging from MiG-27, MiG-25, MiG-23, MiG-21, Su-22, and Su-20 with only losing around 12 to 16 F-14 during the war. Just imagine how many types of fighter planes were successfully brought down due to the sheer existence of the F-14 such overwhelming air superiority. Nevertheless, the battle victories the F-14 had during the Cold War were not without problems. The aircraft design that has so far been proud of turns out to have secret flaws that forced the F-14 to be retired immediately. Reflecting today, it is almost impossible for enemy bombers carrying nuclear bombs to fly over the US mainland, thanks to advanced detection technology and today's geopolitical climate. And even if it had to happen, it would have used intercontinental ballistic missiles which could reach an operational distance of more than 5,500 kilometers. This was completely different during the Cold War when technological developments were only able to carry nuclear bombs via aircraft bombers. Concerns about the threat of nuclear aircraft bombers from the Soviets made the US develop the F-14 fighter with long-range missiles with high explosive power. Unfortunately, this concept makes a fully loaded F-14 fighter weigh more than 27.6 tons. Almost twice the weight of the F-A-18 and more than twice the fully loaded F-16. Heavier means more difficult to maneuver, that's just the first problem. The second problem came from the very design of the variable sweep wing. Despite its advantage in subsonic and supersonic cruises, maintaining a complex sweep wing system proved to be costly. For one hour F-14 operation required maintenance between 30 and 60 hours, certainly the associated cost was not cheap. On the other hand, this type of wing allows enemies who have skill and experience to predict the F-14's maneuvers, which puts the F-14 pilot at a disadvantage. For those two reasons, in the end, the variable sweep wing design was never again used in fighter jets in the modern era. When the F-14 first took to the skies, it was bigger, heavier, and could carry more armament than any carrier fighter in history. It could track and engage enemy bombers from triple-digit ranges at a time when many national air forces were still focused on guns and cannons for air-to-air -air fighting. Now, times have changed and air defense needs are much different from the Cold War. The F-14th of May have had a short life cycle, but the mighty Tomcat's presence had lasting effects on naval aviation and even on foreign relations around the world. Even so, F-14 will always be remembered as a true hero for an everlasting tale. Thank you for watching our video, don't forget to subscribe.